Jonathan. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So tell, talk to me a little bit about what life's been like since you showed your menswear, because it's been quite um, hectic, hasn't it? We're, we're quite up against it. Though. We're obviously um, working on many projects. <laughs> um, we've just, obviously, we just finished uh, resort two weeks ago. We've been in Paris. I have been working in Milan on another project. So yeah, it's it's going full on. And we're straight into the next one's our show. Yeah. So I haven't really had time to think. <laughs> had time to think. <laughs> oh, you need a holiday. <laughs> but it's all good, you know, I'm still smiling, so I'm sure that's a better thing. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about the reaction, because we were talking to this about this before we went live and there has yeah. been. The, it's very interesting. Um the I find it very sometimes very difficult because you, when you design a show or you, or an ongoing process, the reality of garments become your own reality. You know, mm -hmm. like they're in your studio, they're around you all the time. Mm -hmm. The normality or the impact of them is is the same no matter what way you look at it. Do you know what I mean? Because you're so used to the pieces. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, it, it was a very it's a very odd thing to have done a show and it be on, you know, CNN, <laughs> news channels, um, uh, you know, the Daily Mail and things like that. It is a very different thing to be thrown into something where you, you sometimes you feel misunderstood, but at the, mm. the same time you kind of if that genre was getting it, then I wouldn't be doing the right job. <laughs> if you yeah. know what I mean? So, um, no, I'm, I, you know, I love debate. You know, I'm not going to read everything, but I love, I love, you know, for me, clothing has to have, uh, clothing has to make you think. And I think it's extremely important that you, it, that when you present an idea, it has to cause it's not to cause controversy, it's to cause a reaction. You have to yeah. question something, you have to think. It has to open up an idea, do you know what mm. I mean? It's interesting that you say you want people to question things, because some people, like one of the criticisms that was bandied around a fair bit, particularly in some of the, the sort of channels that you mentioned, was that, you know, it was just done to shock. But I don't see what's shocking about it. That's my, my problem with it, do you know what I mean? I don't, I don't necessarily look at the silhouette and think it's actually that shocking. Ultimately, I am not going to tell a man to wear a trouser with a garment because ultimately I do not see the human race or the man as unintelligent in that way. Mm -hmm. It's about a build-up. It's about architecture. It was about suspended architectures. It was about line. And it wasn't about how far you could push the line. It was about how you could disproportionately balance it so that you, you build a new character. It's not about androgyny. It's about, it's about architectures. It's mm. about, you know, it's about different proportions, you know. And I think what maybe what I'm trying to, like, understand is I think I do clothing to make it believable. Clothing should not be non-believable. And mm. I think the problem was it was, it was uncomfortable for people. Mm. But that's not a bad thing. If people were to give rave reviews about something straight after a show, then I have not done my job because ultimately it has to make sense in three months. It's mm. my mantra for things because ultimately yeah. you cannot judge something straight away because ultimately it, do, it won't make sense, do you mean? Mm. It's never going to make sense straight away mm -hmm. um, because it, it's not meant to. Mm. It's an idea. It's, you know, clothing has to be pushed and has to be new. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not a sartorial designer, so don't come to me to get, to get that. You know, I hope that people come to us to to experience something, to find something, to find something within themselves or to find something which is a line that they have not seen before or a proportion that they have not seen. Mm. You know, shows are not, they are spontaneous acts, but they're calculated. 
there, you know, I, you know, if I was going out to shock, I could, I would have done something more shocking. <laughs> like, yeah, that's fair enough. Should we have a look at? Yeah, no, go for it. I'll pause as we go along so we can. When you're um, ordering your show, do you think a lot about how it's going to appear online? Um, yeah. Yeah. I like things to... Because you like putting them in... I like a grouping. Yeah. I think an architectural, like these opening looks, you, you want it to be uh, a triptych or a duo, uh, like our duos of things that mm. really reinforce I'm a cut. Like, you know, we cut these as backward cut jackets, really. It was taken from a jacket block. We reversed it so the, the shoulder sat forward. You know, we, the neckline was developed by just stapling it mm. with a stapler, um, which then evolved. We brought the darts to the front so that the back hovered. You got this kind of suspended architecture, kind of a bit froggy, mm. you know? You talked in your show notes about this kind of, you know, um, bourgeoisie bedroom habits and this kind of yeah. middle class kinkiness, which I found quite interesting. It was because for me, there was something very British. Yeah, there, it's about. something, yeah, the, it, you know. I think, you know, I live and work here. I'm originally from Northern Ireland, but there is that element of, you know, it's a twisted kind of humour, you mm. know what I mean? Which ultimately is to kind of, which the kink aspect of it is that idea of flesh. Flesh is a graphic line. That's the point of it. I mean, you soften, you soften the neckline and you soft, the soften with a short line. It's a very kind of, you're softening two architectures, two architectures, uh, architectures <laughs> to meet together, which is like a two-piece look. Mm, mm. Um, and you want to look to have conviction, you mm. know? And it's like, you, you want it to have a feeling of, of the newness. Like the back is done in a way where you have the weight of the seam line to kind of give it the movement to reflect the front of the, the ruffle. You know, that kind of... Mm. That kind, you know, as, like, I know that's a weird thing to say, that froggy architecture, something which is, it has a pulse to it, do you know what I mean? Do you think that the shape and the fact that it was men, you know, in kind of culottes and men in very effeminate clothes, do you think that kind of eclipsed a little bit the focus that you'd put on, you know, the cut and the architecture of the clothes? Yeah, no, but it all has to become an idea. It all has to become a overall concept, do you know what I mean? Like, ultimately, all the fabrics are really quite classic, you know, mm. like, you know, you have like a sponge, which is obviously maybe a little bit more technical, but this is duffel fabric. Mm. It's not, you know, a, a controversial texture, do you know what I mean? Mm. And how your, your, the arms react in the body, you know, the, the, the line that you create by putting the hands in the pockets, you get this, you get a very good silhouette, you know? Mm. And you don't need to come up with 20,000 silhouettes, do you know what I mean? It's not about layered garments, it's about clothing, you know? And, mm. and, and, and I think that's, that's what turns me on, do you know what I mean? I want clothing to be constructed, do you mm. know what I mean? The, everything is considered here, no matter if it's an anti-fit shape or it's something that is cut in a way, do you know what I mean, to show the body which is more flatter, do you mean? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think sometimes people want to overtly, it's like kink is seductive and it's kind of an undercurrent, you know, sexual kind of the, the male torso in terms of the groin and the ass is not, you know, I'm not here to put on a, you know, a sex show or I'm mm. doing a different job, do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, but people are very comfortable at making women's clothes, you know, quite sexual and quite kinky, but with men's clothes, oh, unless it's macho. Yeah, no, we're petrified. But I actually think what would, is more disturbing is a man in underwear with a six pack. I find that, I, I find that, <laughs> that's so thoughtful. And it seems I mean. quite irrelevant as well, in a sense. Yeah, like, I think, you know, you know, everything here has a purpose. I mean, there's a build, there's a building up of a silhouette. You know, mm. you're evolving it through the process. I mean, mm. you strip it down to something which is literally a pinstripe coat, a classic coat, but you get the split line, which ultimately through flesh makes it modern. Do you mm. mean? But it's it's just presenting things in different ways. Do you mean? It's mm. articulating something. A, mm. a, a concept, uh, you know, 
I, I don't need to tell guys that you need to put trousers in this. Yeah. It's, it's not about that. It's about how to refine a cut. Now these, yeah, talk to me about the these place. are kind of like, you know, based on this unfolding architecture that we had worked on in women's, this yeah. idea of elongating kind of panels and shapes where you have like one that's meeting the thumb line, one which is extending. It was about a flat structure, mm. do you know what I mean? It's not about a, uh, it's taking a very kind of like anti-fit trouser and making it in a way where you are cinching everything into the middle. So yeah. the knit is like boiled in a way that you get this kind of cinch line where knitwear that is, becomes body conscious, yeah. do you know what I mean? And, you know, when you group looks, you have, you know, you, you have to see them as an overall picture of like, a, it's re, for me it's like representing a, a color palette, a gradient of greys and looking at pinstripe and you know, it's something we've been working with pinstripe the last couple of yeah. seasons. You know, this is an evolutional structure right from resort, you know what I mean? And it feels completely comfortable to me, like mm -hmm. in terms of what I want from it, you know, in the meaning of it. Mm. So you, you you just kind of touched on this, but you're you're not afraid to toy with ideas and bring things over from season to season, and even from women's to men's. Because they're they're they're, they're you're evolving a character, mm. you know that you cannot ditch things. You have to you know you can when it comes to the point where you have exhausted something or you have manipulated it as far as you physically can. You have dragged the guts out of it then to go forward you have to reject to then go forward because ultimately for me this was an end chapter as part of a, a, a massive global picture of what we were doing from the resort forward you mm. know were you a little bit surprised by the reaction because we mentioned this you know people got angry yeah i i, I think sometimes i think people take the you know um london is never going to be pity umo and london is <laughs> never going to be milan or paris it has to be something else, mm. do you know what I mean? There is no point being a follower, mm. do you know what I mean? It's, this industry is about, you know, exploring new things, new line, new proportion. Even if you come up with one new thing a season, it's so important in giving back into this industry because ultimately mm. you, it has to be exciting. Mm. I get up every morning because I want it to be exciting. I want to learn. I, I want to know what, how people think and, and how people engage with clothing, do you know what I mean? Mm. Like ultimately, every single thing in this show is extremely classic. Mm. This is an elongated shirt, do you know what I mean? It is cut in a rubberized cotton, you know, it's made in the UK, it's made by the same factory that does some of the biggest, you know, sartorial brands, yeah. but ultimately you're representing something in a way that is either a new proportion, a new length, and obsessing over it. Because you need to try to like work out how to build, you know, a show is a show, do you know what I mean? You know, I, I read something which, um, by uh, Joanne Furnish, and it was like, you do not see any man walk down a street listening to Angel Hayes in that situation. Because that is not reality. Ultimately, you are presenting a possibility of a, of a statement of what is in your mind to people to be able to digest, yeah. you know, to and make distill a, well. and distill. You cannot, you know, you cannot please everyone. I am not here to please everyone because mm -hmm. it's impossible. Like you, you physically can't. Yeah. But I believe in what I do. I believe in what I'm, I'm presenting because we work extensively on this in terms of research in terms of like finding balances within what I think and what my team thinks and what we're trying to present to people because I think it's so important to we have to think of all aspects talk to you me know. a little bit about your research for this collection. you know like we you know we were looking at like taking garments apart reconstructing them taking things that were classic representing them mm. in a different way you know you know cutting garments in ways that became more naive like they became a controlled naivety that you could look at something and you would see one thing and you could think another you know mm. it's like i was listening to 
to what you guys had, uh, had recorded and it was like you know some of the shorts it was like they're not corseted they're just a-line cut it's an mm. illusion mm. you know it's you know but that's exactly what you want people to think yeah. you want people to think the difference because ultimately when it goes into the shop floor you want someone to have a second opinion on yeah. it do you know what I mean Tell me a little bit about, because we talked about this before we went live and it was very interesting, the kind of things that people have picked up. Because people haven't been afraid of picking this up, have they, of, of buying certain pieces? Mm. We've, you know, we've got, you know, we, we have, in, like, the show has increased. We have, have bigger sales than ever. Mm. Mm. And the reason I believe in that, that is happening, is because it's a concept. It's an idea. Yeah. You don't have to wear all of it. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. a, you pick up on a tiny piece of it and you can run with it, do you know what I mean? Ultimately, this with trousers is a look, do you yeah. know what I mean? It is, you know, but you want to try to build something new. It's important to do that, you know? Mm. And, you know, our sales have gone from like 15 stockers to nearly 40. Yeah. You know, like 35 to 40. Like, it's a massive increase, you know? Mm. We're taking on some of the biggest stockers in the world, do you know what I mean? Mm. And because ultimately, you have to see it in the flesh, you know, mm. like the show is one thing, the other, the other part is another. One is about a narrative and the other part is about going, you know, to the shop floor and consuming. You yeah. know, there's a difference between fashion and clothing. It's a very different thing to but do. There, were, there was both in here because there was fashion and there was yeah. clothing. You know, some of those knits, you can see them it's, translating to it's, a very different shop. Yeah, of yeah. course, you know. These dots were like an exercise on, you know, it's a very kind of technical kind of knit. It's like a very kind of sponge, neoprene kind of feel. It's sort of, you've got like, it's a mix. You were, we were trying to obsessively try to get a jacquard and a, or an intarsia into a circular format to be able to exercise a color process. Do you mm. mean it, you know, and it's, you know, that kind of taking something which is, as simple as a sweater and re kind of thinking how to make it as a fully faceted garment which has a touch and a feel of something else do you yeah. mean and that's and that's what it's about talk to me about this look here so this is you know i was very interested in this idea of one piece looks jackets became one piece looks now yeah. this is ultimately the same length that you would get on a large t-shirt mm. That's it. It's, you know, it's there is nothing else that is not really to kind of, you know, it is not, this look was never built to shock at all. This look was to really show a line, the line where the line meets the thumb. You know, it's a very important kind of like, it's like the moment where you can sit and not reveal. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you know, for me, it was like, I love this look because I think it's so it's so pure, it's so, it's effortless, but it's not a, a thoughtful, do you know what I mean? It, mm. it, it's something which is quite like a very kind of like slim cut tank, which is longer, but ultimately could be a shift, could not be a shift, you know? Mm. It's quite mm. exciting to see the, the, the flesh, the flesh is what is exciting here, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I, mm. it's not, you know, it's not about, sexual perversions it's about you know a, a comfortness you know I think sometimes mm. I think people maybe uh, maybe felt like it was it had crossed maybe an uncomfortable line for them but mm. uh, you know your old comfort lines are different I mean mm. and for me this is a proposal you know it's interesting you talk about comfort because we were, we were talking about this about how the boys actually they looked comfortable in their clothes. And we were saying that's actually, I think, something that made people feel even more uncomfortable with it because all those models looked quite, looked yeah, very at but, home in what they were wearing. Yeah, because, all, you know, a lot of the, the, the guys who are at Walking Show are coming into series as a series of the fittings, you know, mm. like, you know, they're hyperly professional people. Do you mm. mean they are, you know, it's what they do. Mm. They have, you know, we spend months researching different people to be in the show. It's like every aspect has to be taken into consideration. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And, and it's important, like it's super important that 
you know, the, the person that you're using is comfortable in what they're doing, do you mm. know what I mean? Mm. And they believe in the character, do you know what I mean? Like this kid here, Danny Arder, like has been in many shows of our, I believe in that character. I think he, he can, he holds the clothing in the right way. It, it you know, there's a, a beautiful kind of, you know, line here. It's mm. about the slashes. It's about certain reveals, like, you know, exposing certain parts of the body. I'm building up line, like, you know, mm. and, you know, and each guy is a, a, an individual character. Mm. We talked a little bit as well about women buying this, because I know there are similarities to your, to your proof. Yeah. But do you, some designers don't like men buying, like women buying their menswear. Do you mind? I don't mind. I don't, you know, for me, clothing is clothing, no matter who it's on. It's all about the person who buys it, you know. If I was to sit here and kind of like say that who should wear what and who should wear, do and how they not, should it's like defeats the point to you know mm. me. It really defeats the point of the whole process. And you know, I we have done a resort, and the resort is a different take on this because mm. ultimately it's a running dialogue. As a designer, you're on a running dialogue because the seasons are like back to back. Mm. So you know, you want to try to look at ways in which you know. I sometimes actually think unisex is kind of like an amazing thing. You know, I mm. think in the 90s, it was such a big thing. Mm. Um, and it's when I grew up, it was an influencer, Calvin Klein and mm. that, you know, CK1, the perfume, like that moment, you know, it's taking things and evolving. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It's like, you know, it's important to kind of like put things into con textual fashion history and you know and think you've got to you, you know as a designer you're you know it's a job you're paid to think you mm. know it's you know you have to propose something new mm. and it's important that there is that that you know I think we as a brand go out to appeal to both mm. Mm. and represent represent things in different formats and on different characters and I think that's important you know Talk to me about this kind of shape, because this idea of a man, you know, with his hands in his pockets, that's quite a masculine shape. It's a very masculine yeah. shape. It's like that idea of hands in a puffer jacket or, yeah. you know, that... Or even in, you yeah. know, like a, a, an overcoat over and a, a duffel. suit. Yeah. yeah. And it, I liked this idea of, you know, what this look, what, why we kind of brought this into this part is this idea where you get this like window of leg mm. and you get this kind of architectural froggy structure from the arms being in the pockets, which for me is a very new way of presenting how to position arms. Mm. Do you know what I mean? How to position the attitude, ultimately, mm. you know, giving that character. And tell me a little bit about the accessories as well, because we saw the gloves earlier, but also the boots and the gloves with the Yeah, foot. no, we had that kind of like, that, you know, softening the edge of something, you know, yeah. it was a, a running kind of That's thing from previous through, season. Yeah. You know, which will drop, you know, but for me it was like, we still had stuff to exercise with it. You know, like the boots, it kind of softened the line. It kind of made it less, you know, equestrian. It took mm. it somewhere which was different. But as you say, a riding boot and a white glove, you know, those are very typical historical menswear pieces. <laughs> yeah, like it's, you know, you're just representing it in, in a very, in a controlled, but in a, in a non-controlled manner. You mm. know, it's sort of, it has to still live, you know, the, the attitude has to still live in it, you know? Mm, mm. And then these were kind of based on this like very simple kind of like, you know, it was about the, the, where the leg was meeting and how you anchor pointed it and you had this like feeling that the legs were about to burst through. They had long slits in the back, but just to the point where it was enough. You know, these, for example, I love, you know, I've mm. always loved the graphic knit. It was the idea of like looking over the fence, looking to the other side, you know, mm. and these kind of like A-line cut shorts in like in a duffel fabric, super simple. The idea of, you know, that kind of school look. Yeah, for me, these were the most kind of fetishistic looks because there was a, uni a school yeah, uniform. Yeah, there's, you know, and, I, and this is just your classic camel coat and camel hair, you know, like really nicely cut. Some, there, we wanted to really work on how like we could get the line where the knee would hit so that it would just kind of elevate just enough, Jimmy. Mm. 
-hmm. And then these are just retakes on, on Mac structures, cutting them in like fleece back, so it had a bit of a fleecy kind of like architecture and flat, like experimenting with flat color. Mm -hmm. And then these we had spent a lot of time looking at different kind of like rib architectures around the neck. So yeah, like inter is it's like interfolding neck lines. And okay. then the back is like white. Mm -hmm. And you have, you know, it's a very hyper-technical knitwear meeting something which is quite traditional in the stitch. But it was an exercise and it was actually lots of multicolors inside them and how multicolor can become one color, mm. you know, mm -hmm. one palette. You have to see the looks as, uh, as a grouping mm. because they become an overall picture of mm. like a series of like, of it. Your palette was very, you kind of touched on this earlier, but your palette was very muted. Yeah. Yeah. It was a very kind of classical, you know, feel of something. It had a very kind of like, I wanted it to have a relatable feel It's and interesting touch. you say relatable because that's one thing that I thought with it is all, as much as all the pieces were kind of, as you say, a very new silhouette and it was something very different, there was an element of, you know, a classic camel coat, mm. a white top, uh, you know, the elements of picking up the codes of sort of men's dressing. Yeah, and then this is this like, this is a, a tank with a pair of shorts, you know? It's an illusion, it's trickery. It's to draw you in and to spit you out. And draw you in and spit you out. Because ultimately you've got to kind of, you have to tell a story throughout the whole process. I mean, like this is leather, it's double bonded, you know, it's, you know, it's about kind of this very kind of like mono architecture where it's like you're reproducing something to reinforce a, a a global power because now when you see it you see it as a formation as a global palette you know it's mm. about a global picture shown in a show context to give an opinion mm. you know fashion for me is that you know you have to have an opinion and a, a statement because that's what makes it real you know it makes it that's why I get up in the morning what did you want the biggest takeaway to be from this collection what did you want people to kind of I wanted consider people anything. to consider consider modernity in menswear and that there is escapism within menswear, you know? Mm -hmm. And that you can have newer proportions on men and still have, you know, uh, uh, you can still have that moment of where you don't, you, where you trust it. There has to be a trust element. I don't feel in this there is a non-trust, a non-belief. I think it's a very exact character. It's for me as I work night and day to come up with something new each season, mm -hmm. as much as we physically can do with the seasons being so tight, you mm -hmm. know? And it's about an evolutional structure. I, I cannot reinforce that enough. It's like, it's a running dialogue from beginning to end and you know, you want people to think. If, if people are not, you know, you want people to either love it or hate it. I don't want people to be in between because if they're in between, then you're not saying enough. You know, you're not, you're not giving enough to people. You know, you're not making, you're not striking up a dialogue with a customer. Because ultimately, and you know, and it's really nice when you do a show like this and, and sales go extremely well because you know out there People want something new. You know, I can show you denim jeans. I can do loads of denim jeans, but it's not new. And we can still have it in core, but ultimately each season has to be something else to take it forward, you know, because it's what excites people. I think clothing has to be exciting. And, you know, when I was studying at university, it was like I was, ex I was obsessed by clothing. You become obsessed and... And you want that. You want people to... I want clothing to be exciting. I want to... You know, you want shows to be exciting. Mm -hmm. You want people to kind of, you know... Plus, this, this space, you've got to fill it. It's massive, you know? It's an incredible space under the British Fashion Council. And you want to fill it. It needs to be a show, you know? It has to feel like something, you know? It has to give the feeling that you... You're bringing all these people to come and see clothing. You've got to show them something, you know? You did. You definitely <laughs> did. Jonathan, thank you no, very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>